So do you ever have moments where you're feeling stuck in your creative process? Or do you have moments where you haven't done creativity for a while and you're trying to get back into the flow of creativity? So today I wanna to share with you the intuitive collage process that I use when I get stuck. So first let's start with a variety of papers. I have a variety of the scrapbooking paper. I'm using some tissue paper. I even have some Japanese paper in here. And I'm gonna start showing you how you can use all these materials to create a beautiful intuitive collage. So maybe you wonder what I mean by intuitive collage. Really what you're doing is just looking at some of the papers that you have and you're trying not to let your brain take over too much. You just kind of want to go with the flow. This is trying to get that thought process going of not perfect, but more just allowing things to flow. And sometimes I find sometimes the best collages I make is when I'm teaching class and I have to explain while I'm working and I'm not really thinking that much about it. I'm just throwing some stuff down, seeing what will happen. I'm just gonna start by just ripping a few papers and a few things and then start layering them. I also have some jelly paper, uh, some tissue paper that I'm also gonna be using for this process. And I'm thinking I wanna stick more to neutrals today. Not because I have to, but just because I'm feeling like that's where my brain is in the process today. I've described a few things. You want to start with a few things that you've ripped. Um, this is not about planning it out as much as it is about just having something to start working with. I'm just putting a little bit of matte medium in a cup here. I use the Liquitex matte medium. I often, the golden stuff's really good too. Um, you can also use Mod Podge or something else for this. It can be really anything that you have on hand. Um, but I personally like the matte medium for this. I also prefer that it doesn't smell as strongly as the Mod Podge. So if you're sense sensitive, it might be a better choice for you. And so all I'm doing is basically starting by adding in a little bit of matte medium to my surface, adding it to the back of my piece of paper. So if you've never done collage before, this is basically how you do collage. You add it to the back of your piece of paper onto your surface. You wanna stick the two together. If it feels like your surface has gotten a little bit dry, just add in a little bit more matte medium underneath between the layers, and then just add another layer on top. What I love about matte medium and the art journals, you don't have to worry about it having your pages stick together. Uh, then anything with a gloss finish in a journal will stick together a little bit more. So I tend to stick with matte mediums and inside my art journal, just so my pages don't stick together. And we're just gonna keep going along with this process until we've covered the entire page. The reason I thought I would share with this one with you today is because I've been in a little bit of a slump uh, creatively. More, I've been teaching so much, I haven't actually had time for my own art. And I haven't even done YouTube for the last few weeks because of my schedule. And I had a moment of, I don't even know where to start. How do I even come up with something that I wanna show you guys? And so I thought, well, how about we just do intuitive cl collage? This is where my brain is. So if you've ever run into these times and just feeling like uncertain, sometimes the best thing to do is just throw some paper down and see what happens. And so I have so much scrapbooking paper from different projects and stuff I've done over the years. I just used to do a ton of scrapbooking. I don't do a lot of that anymore, but I have collected a lot of paper over the years. And at this point, it's time to start using it. When you start seeing that some of your paper is 10 years old, it's time to start using it on project. Like seriously, we gotta clear out our stashes and do something useful with it. And so all this precious paper that I held on for years is now becoming collage fodder, which I think is a great use for it. You might as well use it, you have it. It's just a great way of just being able to use all your favorite patterns and designs in your collage. Yeah, so what happens when we get stuck? How do we move past this? How do we find our way through? Um, it's not always easy. I know for myself, I've been having some moments of, man, I'm not feeling all that creative. And you know, here I am with my YouTube channel saying, man, I don't feel all that creative, right? But it happens to all of us. I think uh, acknowledging it and just being willing to go, you know what? I just need to do some more work. I got to try some stuff because man, I'm stuck. And that can be a really good thing. It can really show us uh, where we need to maybe grow or learn something new. I find that whenever I don't have time to learn a lot is I'm like, I've been doing the same thing forever and I don't even know where to start or change things. So I'm done with jelly paper and tissue paper. I tend to just only put the medium down on the surface and then I add another layer on top. The reason for that is this is a lot more delicate and you're going to run into more issues if you try to add too much to the back of it. It's probably going to rip. And this is a book that I made, so I'm actually going over the center stitching with this. I know some people might not like that. In that case, you can always cut your pieces to be on either side of your page. I don't bother. I'm more than happy to let it kind of curl and move. And if there's a little bit of buckling at the center, I don't care. 
I mean, it kind of depends on your personality. And yeah, so like there's no reason you can't just add in some paper and then add in some other tissue paper on top of it. I mean, not everywhere has to be colored. Like in this case, I'm adding in some areas that are going to be white. I'm really okay with the idea that uh, this is a lot lighter in color, this page. I was looking a little bit more for neutrals and patterns is what I kind of had in my head with this. And as much as it's intuitive, it doesn't mean you don't have a plan necessarily. It's just not holding on too tightly to that plan. I started doing a little bit of paint pouring again. I was teaching a class the other day about paint pouring. And the one thing that I kept talking about was the idea of we need to let go. Um, and so often that's what intuitive collage is about too. It's about letting go. It's letting your brain do its thing. And sometimes that's the best art you'll ever get is when you let your brain take over and you don't worry so much about having an outcome. And I find that some mediums, especially pouring medium, you try to have an outcome, it's not going to look as nice as you hope it will look. And so you can see that I'm not even really sticking with color. I'm doing a little bit of everything on here. This might be a little interesting to see where I end up taking this, but you know, I'm, I'm getting, I'm not thinking, I'm not judging what I'm doing. I'm just throwing it down. We're going to play around with it, see what's going to happen and move on from there. So if you're new to art journaling and you're new to collage, this is a great process just to start because, you know, I think sometimes we get so precious about our paper. We get precious about how it looks all the way along the way. I love one of the painters that I follow and she says every painting goes through an ugly stage and I have people go well you can't have pain to go through an ugly stage you can't say that and think well they do though they have these moments where they don't look very pretty they're definitely in the process but I think also it's embracing the process so you're not so bothered by the fact that things are less than perfect it doesn't have to be perfect to still be really good and this is where if you're doing art as self-care or as therapy or it's just as time to just create and dabble having a practice like this where you just go in with no intention no outcome in mind you're gonna find you're gonna be really happy with what you come up with so yeah that background has a lot of different color to it and none of it matches and that's awesome that's kind of where I'm going with this I actually gonna have this Japanese paper that I'm gonna throw in I feel almost bad ripping this stuff up it's so beautiful but I think it's time to add in a little bit of the Japanese paper to this uh, the Japanese paper is gorgeous I I love using it I use it a lot for book binding and for creative projects but I just love uh, the thickness of it uh, the beauty of the designs I'm like look at all that little bits of gold and and color that you can get just from that beautiful paper and then i don't want to even waste a little bit so i'm just going to take little bits here and put them along the edges yeah and even for me this is quite a random intuitive collage because i, I tend to try to be a little bit more picky about that but you know what that might look crazy but i think that looks awesome if in any areas you feel like you might not have the paper down really really well you can always go over the entire surface with a light layer of matte medium again don't push too hard some of the paper might be wet especially the tissue paper so you don't want to uh, damage it but it's just a nice way of just adding in a little bit of a final coat just so when you're adding other mediums on top you don't have to worry about it absorbing into the paper and so it's just going to sit on top of the matte medium and so now i'm going to come in with maybe a little bit of two colors one is white and the other one is this turquoise green and i'm just adding a little bit to my surface i actually put out a little bit too much paint there but what i'm just doing is grabbing a little bit of my palette knife and if you never use a palette knife you want it more along the one side and you always want it on the back you don't want it on the front and then all i'm doing is just adding in a little bit of white paint Paint. and this is just adding in like a little bit of cohesion it catches the high points of your page it maybe brings a few things together lightens a few things darkens a few things if you find that you don't like that look if that looks too heavy for you what I've done is I have a brush here with a little bit of water in it and you can always smooth it out you can also take a baby wipe and just remove some of it too so that it's now catching some of the high points but you're not having too much color on your page and if you really don't like it you can remove it completely because now that we've added a layer of matte medium and we've added it at a really thick even layer it's not stuck to the paper it's actually stuck to the medium but you can see i've even left just a little bit of white in some places and so i'm going to come in now with a, actually a smaller palette knife because i really want to bring in a little bit of that texture that we have from the tissue paper and from some of these other papers and again i'm not really thinking through like oh does this look perfect what does this look like i just want to maybe just kind of add a little bit of white in places just add a few things make it feel a little bit more put together because i feel like you can use lots of different papers but then it's kind of nice to come in 
and like find things to kind of bring it all together. Or even just add a little bit more variation and texture. That's why I like the white, because the white's a very neutral color. But then I can also come in with a little bit of the green. I've even mixed a little bit of the green and the white together. And this is where you can go over areas that maybe you find are a little bit too bold. This is about play. This isn't about perfection. So, and again, that's why the baby wipe's nice because it has a little bit of moisture to it. It helps take things away, but then if you feel like you've gotten too far, you can pull it back a little bit. You can remove it all together. Um, I'm good. I'm just looking to try to get all those little high points. And again, you can see you don't need much paint. You don't want to glop this on. You glop this on, it's it's not going to give you the look that you want. But it's just a fun way of just making those feel like they're a little bit more part of the whole collage. Uh, now that I'm just taking a look back, this is where you can sit and go, okay, do I love it? Do I not love it? And this is not about... I think one of the intuitive processes, it's not, not thinking, but it's also letting your mind go and, and figure out, like, what do you want? Is there is there a little bit of pink here that maybe that you want to pull out? Are you a little bit uncertain about pulling out too much of this darkness? Because I really like this pattern in there. So I'm like, I don't want to cover up too much of it. This can soften a little bit. I don't want to remove all of the shiogami paper there just because I really love that design. I don't want to hide all of it. But I like what I've done in here. And so, again, it isn't that you can't adjust or or that you can't think, but it's also just kind of going with the flow instead of getting too caught up in the details. So now we've created this beautiful background. We've let it dry. It looks fantastic. From here, we have a few different ways it can go. We can continue the intuitive process of just adding in a little bit more layers and abstraction, and that can be a great way. But I like moving forward with a little bit more detailed images. And these ones were from Simply Stated Designs, uh, who is a Canadian small business. And she has a lot of different ephemera packs. She does a lot of stuff for scrapbookers, but what I find is because she has larger images and her variety of images with beautiful uh, imagery works really well for art journaling. And that's why I love what she's doing. I'm basically gonna be sticking with some of these dragonflies today. And I just want to put them on my page just to get a sense of maybe where I want them to be. I'm not going to add them right away, but I'm just using them as an idea of where maybe I want to go with this page. Part of the intuitive process for me is also giving myself a place where I can look at certain ideas and thoughts and maybe figure out where I want to go next with my page. And because I decided on dragonflies, I'm going to be using this stencil that I've had for ages. I'm just going to use the grasses and the leaves. I think that's going to be just a nice addition to my page. And I'm going to go quite contrasting with this. So I'm going to go with some black spray paint. And these black spray paints from Pabio, you want to shake them for probably a good two minutes before you start spraying them. Otherwise, you're going to get a lot of the accelerant and not a lot of the spray itself. Now that I shook this for two minutes, my page has got a little wobbly just from the collage, but the nice thing about this is with the spray paints, not only do they go on very easily, it kind of can help you control where you want that on your page. And I, I love the look of that. I'm just gonna add another small section in here. So you want to make sure that it dries fully. You can see here I got a little bit of that edge of that moon. Right? The nice thing about the matte medium is if you have these overspray areas, it's very easy to remove them. Because you've added that layer of matte medium, it's basically sealed all that paper, which means that now you can come in and you can scrub with a baby wipe. So if you do make that kind of mistake, don't worry about it. It doesn't mean that it's there permanently. I would generally love to move on with some more spray paints, but I want to show you a different medium that we can use today. So we can either use the Distressed Crayons or or the Faber-Castell Gelatos for the next step. And so I haven't really decided where I want to go with this. And this is where uh, the intuitive art process kind of comes in, where we're not looking at figuring everything out perfectly, but maybe thinking, where do we want to go next? I love these soft colors. I love the muted color. So I want to keep in that direction. I don't want to add too much dark colors in it. I love the black because of the contrast it can give. And the matte black spray paint is really nice. And so I'm just going to start adding in a little bit of this distressed crayon to the surface. And you might go, wow, that's really dark. That's a lot of color. But uh, bear with me as I show you where we can go next with this. And so this is where if you put in a lot of color like this, you could let it smear and rub and be a lot more gentle. I know I put a really big area in, but this is where you can see it's catching a lot of that texture. And that can be really, really beautiful. But what I really wanted to do with this is show you what you can do with stencils with it. And so I have a stencil here and it's just a bit of a grid. And now I'm going to move to wipe out all of the extra color that I've added. And this is why you want to start with a little bit of a darker layer of it and then add in your baby wipe after. 
So you can see now we have some very interesting texture and color. And this is also where you could go with the gelatos and do the same thing. These gelatos are metallic, so they're gonna give a little bit more of a metallic look to it. And then maybe you just want it in a corner here. I kind of don't want to take over that really pretty white that I have in there. So again, I'm gonna smear it so it's just a little bit more soft because I want that soft look. I'm gonna go in around some of these areas. You can even pull it out. And let's go in with a little bit more of that grid. If you've enjoyed what you've seen so far, click that like button. Every Every time you click that like button that just helps share this video with more people so thank you so much for your support this is also where I could maybe go in in a section in the center and we don't have to keep sticking with the blue maybe we'll come up with some of the green gelato and we're just gonna come in and this is also another way if you have a little bit of overspray you can hide some of that overspray and what I like about using the more open stencils for this is that you get the color that you want but then you can hide up some of those spots that maybe you're not as happy with and then you don't have to remove all the color. You could choose to go a little bit lighter, remove a little bit less, and there you go. So there's lots of options with this. We're not stuck with just one thing. And so this is where, after we shake it, we can come in even with a little bit more of the spray paint. So we've added some nice areas, but I think I want a little bit of this kind of cursive area. So I'm adding in some of this lilac spray paint. So I'm just going to add in a little bit more right here. I like how that looks. So with this, you can see I haven't done a lot of planning with it. I'm just letting things come, kind of how I feel. I go like, that would be nice to add a little bit of this. That'd be nice to add a little bit of that. It's a very intuitive process. And that's the whole point today is it's about not getting too planned with things because so often we get so planned with things that we don't just enjoy the process of creating. And the thing is, I find that sometimes my best pieces are when I'm in more of that intuitive space. And so I'm adding in some Versamark ink to the page and I'm going to try adding in some pan pastels. We have so much medium on here. We'll see if it actually sticks very well. I'm not sure. But again, this is part of the intuitive art process. And Versamark and pan pastels work really well together. And that's why I want to try adding these two mediums together. And so we'll see if they actually stick to this. They should stick to the ink and not stick to the background. But let's see what ends up happening. So I've given the Versamark just a, like a minute to dry. And I'm going to come in with maybe a little bit of the phthalo green. You can see it very lightly. Again, I didn't want it to be taking over everything. But you can see that you are getting some of the marks from the swirls. It's very subtle, but it is there. And part of that's an uneven surface. So it's going to go on a little bit different. And I feel like that's maybe a bit much. And so if it's a bit much, you can always come back in with your paper towel. And what you'll notice is that the pan pastel will stick to the Versamark, but it's not going to be sticking to the background. So if you're wanting a little bit of subtle color, but you're trying not to have it overtake, that's a great way of going about it. And so another fun thing to do is just add in a little bit of pan pastels around the edge of your page. You can also do this with the distressed crayons or other things, but I actually like this, this phthalo green color that I have. So I'm just going to add it around some of the areas along the edges. This is not meant to take over. This is just meant to add in a little bit of color. I'm adding it to some of the raised edges along the bottom, going in with a little bit of a deeper green color. Because usually when you have brushes, they're they're going to be a little bit darker there. So that's going to, again, create a little bit more contrast between the bottom area and the top area. I'm just using just a makeup sponge. I'm not using anything special with this. If you like the idea of pan pastels and you've never used them, I check out some of my other offerings on my channel. I, I did a, quite a few pan pastel videos. Sometimes the pan pastels work a little bit better along the edges, sometimes they don't. So now I've added a little bit more green, maybe a little bit further than I wanted it to. And then if you feel like you've gone too far, you can always come back in and remove some of the color using a paper towel. Because you can see how much color that I'm picking up with that. So if you feel like you have a little bit too much taking over there, it's an easy way of just removing some color. And that makes it a little less green. But I don't mind the green around it. I feel like this is a very kind of sky purpley, fun, contrasting page. And I'm going to add in my dragonflies. And now that we've darkened the background a little bit, I think that even works a little bit better than maybe it would have before. And I love that these dragonflies have like the beautiful kind of crystal look to them. 
And then I have a bunch of these Tim Holtz quote chips. I'm gonna add one to the bottom as well. And then the last thing I wanna show you is what do you do? Cause they look beautiful, but you might find that in some places they feel like they're falling a bit to the background. This is where you can use a Stabilo All Pencil. Uh, this thing is black, but is also a water soluble. So what I often do is just add in some areas where I maybe want them a little bit darker. And this is where you could just outline and shade in and maybe that's enough for you. But what I'm going to do is come in with just any brush that you have on hand. I just have this really fine acrylic brush. Add a little bit of water and then you can start moving it out. And now you're seeing that now you're getting a little bit of contrast, a little bit of shadow in those areas. And this is also where you can take it from the top of the pencil and add it on. When it goes over a wet area, it actually goes on quite a bit darker. And again, you don't have to go super dark with this. You could add in a little bit, you can add in a lot. It kind of depends on the look that you're going for. And so I hope you can see how with just using Creative Play can help you so much as you're figuring out how to use your intuition or that intuitive part of your brain to create. Because sometimes we can get so stuck on having a perfect project or having everything look perfect when it really doesn't have to. It's just playing around and with every piece that you do, you'll just get a little bit better and a little bit better and it can lead to really good final results. So thanks so much for following along today. I really hope that you've enjoyed this process and that this is giving you a little bit of inspiration of where you can go with your own intuitive art process. If you've enjoyed this video, if you could like, subscribe, and just hit that notification button so you don't miss out on any future videos. Also, share this with your friends. Um, if you find this inspiring, I'd love for you to pass this on to give someone else that great inspiration. And if you're interested in any of the supplies that I've used today, just look at the description below. Um, there are some affiliate links in those links, and that just means that anytime you purchase something, I do get a small commission, but at no additional cost to you. So that's just a really great way of supporting this channel, and that really just helps me. So thank you so much for your support. So if you'd like to see another video that includes spray paints or any sort of spray inks, click here. This is one that I did a few weeks ago that was about spray paints and spray inks specifically, and how how you can layer them together to create beautiful original pages. So I'll see you in that next video.